Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome back. I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have another flip through of my 100 Days of Flutters project so far. We are in week three-ish. And yeah, I'm going to share what I've created this week uh, with you. So I've got my sketchbook journals here, my two watercolor sketchbook journals. And remember, all of the links to all of the supplies that I've been using will be linked down below for you to take a peek at. So um, I'm going to pull out my paints and talk a little bit about the paints that I ended up using this week. I kind of used a couple different ones. And of course, I used my Butterflies and Moths Encyclopedia for my inspiration. And you can also click on the card in that upper right hand corner for the other uh, week one and week two inspiration flip throughs if you're interested. Okay, let's talk about the watercolor paints that I worked with this week. So I pulled out my Da Vinci paints again this week. Um, I really wanted to play a lot with that Da Vinci yellow and just kind of get to know it again. So I had some fun playing with it this week. Okay, so I also used my Sennelier set, which I tend to only bring this set of paints out when I'm working on florals because Sennelier is really, really, it's amazing watercolor, but it's really known for its glazing properties and the ability to do lots and lots of layers and that really makes the colors glow. But I decided to pull it out this week. I also had the Schmincke set that um, I've been using since the beginning and yep, brought that one out too because I really wanted to play with some of the yellows and the oranges and some of the flutters that I created this week. So this set is getting quite a bit of action. And like I had said in the last couple of videos, I had put my Schmincke sets away for a really long time and had struggled with working with them. And I'm just finding great joy in reintroducing myself to those sets. So, and I've got my White Knight set. I've got two of these sets. This is the one that I've worked with this week. I just love some of the colors in this set. I actually just love this whole entire set. And I used a May Green quite a bit this this week in some of the flutters and I just really like the cad lemon in this set as well. Again, all of the supplies that I'm using for the 100 day project are listed and linked below if you're interested. I am working in these two sketchbooks and you can start to see that they're getting a little bit chunky from all of the water. So, so far I have painted 26 flutters and I'm kind of really excited about it. So let's just go ahead and get started with this week's flutters and do a quick flip through. This is the Cape York Birdwing flutter and she's just beautiful. I had a lot of fun working with the greens and the yellows, um, and the May green watercolor paint. And I used the Schmincke version of the May green in this particular um, flutter. And I also just really wanted to see, I tend to not like the neutrals and the blacks. And this is exactly what this butterfly looks like. So I really challenged myself to working with the blacks and mixing up my own blacks to kind of create that flutter. This is the Kaiser Eye Hind flutter. And I'm actually just showing you how I'm not painting these flutters back to back so far on this paper, even though this paper can take it. But I really, really had a lot of fun with this flutter. I used my Schmincke set again to get some of those yellows and the greens and some of the neutrals came from the White Knight set. I used the Burnt Umber and the Burnt Sienna to try to create some of those neutrals. This flutter was definitely very flowy, very wonky. And when I finished her, I realized I totally forgot to paint the body and the antennae. But you know what? I love her just the same. So I just went ahead and rolled with it. Had a lot of fun with my flutters this week. They were definitely less detail oriented and more 
more um, flowy and just letting colors run together. And that's exactly what I did with this one. This was the Pandora Sphinx Moth. And I was really playing with the Quinn Violet and the Oxide, Violet Oxide and a Lizard and Crimson and a little bit of the Schmincke set as well. Just playing with the greens and the pinks and just letting them blend and bleed and flow together in more of an abstract way. So you're going to see a lot of the flutters this month don't have, some have details, some don't have any details at all. They're just kind of abstract. Now I'm calling this one for Scythia, which isn't a real flutter at all, but I was um, desperately thinking about spring this day. And I really just wanted to experiment with some of the Da Vinci yellow. I'm just loving this uh, version of yellow, and I just wanted to play with it a little bit more. I was pretty short on time that day as well, so I just kind of whipped up this little beauty. And I think I'm going to paint a ton more of these little flutters on this page. And this just kind of inspired me uh, for spring and the forsythias that show up in my yard. This might be my favorite spread for the entire week. This is the North American Emperor Moth and the Orange Albatross. These two are definitely flowy, flowy flutters. A lot of wet into wet techniques. I just let all of these colors mishmash and blend together. I really didn't do any kind of fine details here. I was also a little bit short on time. So doing these wet into wet techniques and just letting the paper and the and the watercolor all flow together and let this splash and let them see what they're going to do was just really what I was going for. And I just had a lot of fun with those too. They're just so cute. Okay. So I painted mostly in the, that 300 GSM book, but I did paint in one of the flutters this week. This is the Morpho. And I just wanted to play with all of these blues. They're just so much fun to work with. And I had a little bit of white gouache in here. I did this one in the Arteza, um, the Arteza book. This is a flutter that I'm not really sure where I was going with it. So it's very similar to the purple flutter I shared last week that I painted in the dark and it clearly looked like a hot mess. The, the, the pink one's just kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to do a quick flip through of everything, all 26 flutters that I've created so far, and just kind of talk about this process. Um, Again, the other two videos that I've created with the flip throughs from start to finish are linked below if you're interested in going back and taking a peek at those. I have had a ton of fun so far with this project. Now, my intention for starting the 100 day project was not to create 100 butterflies because I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it to the end and I'm giving myself a ton of grace. I just wanted to reintroduce myself to some of my watercolor palettes that I've collected and haven't really used as much or just kind of play with the colors and create some butterflies color the colors in these sets are just beautiful and brilliant and vibrant and i just wanted to make them move and have a lot of fun now this whole project is kind of personal too because i really have a thing for the flutters and i talked about my personal story related to butterflies in the first video so that is linked below if you haven't seen that yet but this whole process has been very rewarding for me so far. And again, painting something every day, even if I only give myself a few minutes a day, is part of how I take care of myself, how I take care of my mind, and how I take care of, it's a self-care practice for me. So it's been a lot of fun. And I plan on taking some of these flutters and creating things with them. So you're going to see some of that into the future. But I've learned a lot uh, about the watercolors that I had abandoned over the years and haven't really played with. I'm just kind of getting to know some of the brands that I don't use regularly. And every watercolor brand is a little bit different. And actually, I didn't intend on starting this project by using everything that I had, but that's kind of how it has worked out. And it's just been fun to grab a palette and just 
look at a flutter in the book and just kind of see where the whole entire project takes me. Hope you've enjoyed another walkthrough of my 100 Days of Flutters watercolor project. It's been a ton of fun so far. If you're interested in painting some whimsical and wonky flutters in watercolor, head on over to my classroom at craftyourjoy.com and use the code craftyourjoy to get $5 off this course. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And you can take a look at some of my other card and watercolor tutorials right here. Again, I'm so grateful you could join me and I'll see you next time.